Hallelujah. We do barak y'all that are joined with us this evening for this midweek scripture convey, scripture truth. And uh, what I want to do tonight, Israel, y'all, as we do every uh, time we come before you, those that are listening, viewing by via live stream, and just to comfort your labs tonight with just a few words of encouragement. Because the only way we're going to find encouragement, assurance, strength, imunah, is in the words of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. It's in the words of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. That's why Dawid, many times when he prayed in Tehillim, the songs of Tehillim unto Yah, it was those things that was brought to his remembrance of past experiences, yeah. fleeing for his life, knowing that those things that come upon him was because of his own sin because of his own transgressions towards Almighty Yahweh and transgression his Mishra and his Torah. But yet in all that, he knew that the Ahava of Yahweh was mighty, that his Hasid was more than sufficient for him at that time, that even those things that he encountered that were hard, that were tough, and many times painful and hurtful, he knew that it was for his tub. He knew that it was for the best. Because we must reap, Israel, those things which we have sown. Those seeds that we have planted, they will come forth. There are seeds that have been planted in the ground a year, two years, sometimes a few months, before they ever come up. So is it with those things that are in our lives. There are times when the Mishvah and the Torah, it goes out to water. That the understanding of Yahshua, the great light, plants need light, do they not? And it causes those things and those seeds to rise up. Well, when those seeds rise up and they are against Torah, those fruit, those plants, then we must uproot those things, Israel. Those things must be uprooted and cast out of our lives and out of our minds, Israel. That we may walk according to the path, and as we had heard on Shabbat, that we may continue in the path in this way that Yahshua HaMashiach has laid out for us. And he has truly laid the way out. As the old preacher would say, the road map is there. It's right here in Torah. And all we have to do as a people is believe in what Yahweh has commanded us and continue and go on. And by doing that, our assurance is reassured. Because as we walk according to Torah, Yahweh will provide, he will reveal. He has committed promises and gifts unto us, Israel, that we shall receive. But we must continue in this walk. We must continue to be encouraged. And we must continue, Yisrael, to fight. We know this race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but those that endure, that continue until the end of all things. And we know that this battle, it is Yahweh's, but we are in him. So there are things we shall feel. There are pains that we're going to encounter. And it is only by the dom of Yahshua HaMashiach and Yahweh is a hub for us that we should overcome those things, Israel. So what I want to do tonight, this is somewhat a few scriptures or somewhat summing up the last time I was up concerning the abundance of Almighty Yahweh. And then I want to somewhat kind of move into the comforting, because we know we are comforted by the abundance that Yahweh has given us. Have you not heard the, tar- the term comfort food? There's certain things that the body, because you have grown up with those things and you grew accustomed to them, your habits, maybe it's something that is sweet, a dessert, maybe it's just a way some meat is prepared. That when you bite into that thing and you eat it, it somewhat brings comfort to your your body and to your mind. Whether it's good for you or whether it's not. Many times there are things that it's not the appropriate thing or the most tough thing for us. But yet we find comfort in those things. So let us find comfort in the words that Yahweh speaks unto us tonight. 
Let us find comfort in the rebuke. Let us find comfort in the reassurance of his word, Yisrael. Because those things out in the world, though, for a moment, that dessert is filling for the body. 30 minutes to hour. It's almost as though you have not consumed that thing. It's already gone, and you're wanting more. But yet, if there's a want, if there's a need, Israel, yeah, let it be for the things that are written in Torah. Let the things that are written in Torah be our comfort. Let us eat on those things. The manner that falls from Hashemayim, from the heavens, that all the nutrition, the strength that we need, it's in that manner. It's in that Torah. It's in that word, Yisrael. So let me begin here. I want to begin in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 11. Because we must be encouraged to persevere. We must encourage one another to persevere, to press, to continue. In Imuna, in faith, and then knowing that we are set apart by the choosing and the election of Almighty Yahweh. So it says here in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 11, I don't plan to be here before it's long. I know there's those of us that had labor. Our Akim, they're still yet laboring Israel. And as much do we have to do, even in the community, upgrades, fixing the roofs, preparation, maintenance, Israel. But let this be the, the maintenance for our nephesh tonight. Hallelujah. It says in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 11. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of the tikva unto the end. So we must show forth the full assurance of the tikva. Not those things that are hope in, because those things that are hope in, they don't bring a, a, a resolution. But it's those things that we know that has been spoken and promised by Almighty Yahweh that they shall come to pass. Not might, but they shall come to pass. So we prepare our lives, our heart for those things. And even in endurance, Yisrael, in all situations and all battles, we turn to Yahshua HaMashiach. Moving on to verse 12. He said that you be not slothful, slothful, lazy. We, we take it our, as my, I recall my Ema saying, our precious time, when we are instructed by Torah, the things to do. We take our leisurely time instead of being about the business of Almighty Yahweh. He says, be not slothful, but followers of them who through imuna, through faith and patience, they have inherited what? The promise. The promise. And when Yahweh, when he promised unto us, that, that promise never fails. That promise cannot be broken, Yisrael. So in his promises alone, which is his word, we should find assurance, confidence in those things he has spoken unto us. That even by the dam of Yahshua HaMashiach, all of our sins, call all of our sins, Israel. No matter what it is, it has been covered by the dam of Yahshua HaMashiach. So what we do from that, we continue and we move forward. Yeah. Obedient. Yeah. Willing. Before Almighty Yahweh. So he says, follow those. Not the liars. Not those that are deceivers. Not hypocrites. But those that walk and have walked in the imuna and the patience of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 13. For when Yahweh had promised unto Abram, because he could not swear to none greater, Yahweh promised to himself, he swore by an oath to himself, because he could not swear to none greater but himself. That alone should encourage us, Yisrael. That Yahweh, he swears by himself. He has never failed us. He has never left us, Yisrael. So when he promised or he swears or make an oath to himself, believe me, he will bring that thing to flourishing. So he promised unto Abram because he swore 
by himself because there was none greater. Verse, verse 14, saying, surely blessing and blessings I will, barak, I will bless you. Have not Yahweh blessed us, Israel? Yeah. Just us being here today and looking past just a few hours ago, we should see the blessings of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. Hallelujah, that we're still alive. We were able to enter to his bed and to the gathering of the assembly of Almighty Yahweh today. He said, in blessings I will bless you, and I will multiply, and multiplying you I will multiply you. Verse 15. And so after Abram had patiently endured, not only did he endure, because many times we endure a situation, but yet we murmur, we complain about it. We got, we got through it, but we, we said things and have done things we should not have. It said that Abram right here, he endured patiently. Just like Eo. He did not charge Almighty Yahweh foolishly by those things that befall him and his sons, his daughters, all being killed. The servants, the properties that were brought to destruction. Now remember, this didn't happen in the course of of a couple of weeks or a month of a year, it happened all in one day. But yet he did not complain. He did not charge Yahweh foolishly. And what happened at the end of that of Eo? It said that his end was more fruitful than his beginning, Israel. Right, we must endure with patience. Yeah. Waiting patiently on the promises of Almighty Yahweh for them to be fulfilled. Because they will be fulfilled, Israel. Right, yeah. Not hoping that they will. Believe me, they will. So let us walk and stand on that reassurance with confidence and patience, waiting for the promises of Almighty Yahweh. So he waited patiently and he endured. It says that he obtained, he held fast, he grasped hold of, of the promise that Yahweh had promised unto him. Verse 16, for men, they truly swear by the greater, have you not sworn or promised something and did not fulfill it? I would do this. Believe me, I'm going to take care of that. And you find yourself, by some reason, it was not taken care of. Yahweh does not operate by that, Israel. Torah says here in verse 16 in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 6, For men, they truly swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. So even the promises that a man, by his own words, and by his own uh, uh, assurance and strength, he makes a promise that it may wear off or fight off strife or envy. Verse 17, he says, Where are Yahweh willing and more abundantly, even more abundantly than that, a man swearing by his own oath and to hold himself by his word. Yahweh, more willing and more abundantly, he shows to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel. Are not we the heir of promise? We are the heir. We're heirs and joint heirs in Yahshua HaMashiach. The kingdom belongs to us, Yisrael. The promise and the great riches belong unto us. The chosen of Almighty Yahweh. It says even by the immutability, what that is, someone immune by vaccinations. You have children that are going back to school even in this time. They have to have checkups and vaccinations. Why? That they may be immune to certain sicknesses and flus and things of that nature, Yisrael. So the promise of Yahweh is immune to being uh, broken. Or his oath is immune to being brought down. Yisrael. It says that by his promise and the immutability of his counsel, it is confirmed by an oath, by his promise, by his word. Verse 18. That by two immutable things, in which it is impossible for Yahweh to lie. It's impossible. He's immune for it. He cannot lie. I remember something that Rat said many years ago. I was just a young child, maybe 13 or 14, 
who was there in the city of Charlotte, in the tabernacle. It was just a converted storage facility. Our king went in, they worked, they labored, and made it a beautiful place. But I remember from the podium, if Yahweh says that there is a tree in the midst of the congregation, there is a tree there. If he says it, or you may not see it, you may not be able to feel it, but if Yahweh says there's a tree there, there's a tree there. Why? Because he's immune from lying. That was the example that he used all those years ago, and I still remember that. Because it brought forth a great consolation, even in my little nephesh, that that was Yahweh speaks it is. Whether we understand it, whether we see it, whether we perceive it, yeah. Yahweh spoke it, it is so, Yisrael. Yeah. So Yahweh, it is impossible for Yahweh to lie in verse 18. Why? Why is he telling us this in Hebrews, in Hebrew? He said that we may have a strong consolation, that I believe, our consolation, May be strong, Israel. Who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the tigva that is set before us. So even though we flee the enemy, we run, we move from place to place, yet there is still a tigva. Assurance in those things that Yahweh has promised that He will preserve us, that He will keep us. Just like Abram, He said, He said, the zero or the sea or the people, many people will come forth from him. Did he lie? No, he did not. Many nations, many people came forth from Abram. So his promise was sure. And his promises are sure for us, Israel, in the abundance of his Ahava. Verse 19. He said, which tigva? We have an anchor of the nephesh, of our nephesh, our being, because of the tigva. We have an anchor. What is an anchor? An anchor is most important for, by even the most, the largest ships of the world. That, that vessel, why it is at sea, because the sea very rarely stands still. And it moved those great vessels, the warships, the cargo ships. They're hundreds of feet long. And they weigh thousands of tons. They have to have an anchor. Because when they come to a stop and they want to be still, the only way is by the anchor or an anchor. So our anchor is Yahshua HaMashiach. We're in the boat, Yisrael. We're in the ark of safety. But we must have an anchor. And he is expressing unto us this anchor, Yisrael. In patience and enduring that we may obtain this promise. Verse 19. Which the tigva we have, it is an anchor for our nephesh, for our being. Both it is sure, an anchor must be assured. If you're fishing and there's a spot you want to stay in, what does a fisherman do? If he has one, he throws out an anchor. If he doesn't have an anchor, he has a trolling motor, he got to keep circling around to that same spot because you're not going to stay in that same spot. So we have an anchor in Yahshua HaMashiach that we stay in him. That we not go outside the perimeter of Torah. He said, it is sure it is steadfast and which enters into that within the veil. That we can enter into the veil. We're within the veil tonight, Israel. Those that are listening. We're within the veil in the most Kodesh place. That the presence of Yahweh, his judgment, is in the midst of his house. We're able to enter in because of Yahshua HaMashiach. He has anchored us. He has reassured us in the promises of Almighty Yahweh. That we wait patiently for them to be fulfilled. Verse 20. He says, whether the forerunner is for us entered, and that forerunner even being Yahshua HaMashiach, he has made a high coat in forever, even after the order of Melchizedek. So Yahweh, Yahshua is a high coat in. He goes before, he offers the offerings for us unto Almighty Yahweh. Because we're able to come in the veil. There was a time, Israel, you must understand, even in Torah, 
where there were certain people in certain nations that only could go so far to the bay or to the tabernacle. They had outer chambers, they had gates, they had the bay. And there were those that had to dwell in certain places. And they could not come into the veil. But because of Yahshua HaMashiach, we're able to enter in to these promises, Yisrael. Yahshua HaMashiach, he is our anchor. And because of that anchor, we're able to hold fast. As long as we hold unto him, Yisrael, we should never be moved. He should be our confidence. He is our reassurance, Yisrael, that we stand on Yahweh's promises. Hallelujah. Let us stand on his promises, Yisrael. Let us be assured and reassured in his Torah tonight that we not give up the fight, that we not give up the press, that we move on, that we press on, Yisrael, as old condition. I know we hear it so many times, but we must come to this end. I want to make it to the end. Whether it's the end of this body, or whether we see Yahshua, which we all shall see Yahshua face to face, Yisrael. Hallelujah. But we must endure this battle with patience. We must stand on the promises of Almighty Yahweh. We must endure this fight, as Torah says, as soldiers, but even more than soldiers, as warriors. Why? Because a warrior knows he has the victory. Even though his life is given, he knows that even in his life, hallelujah, there is victory. So let us hold fast to our anchor. And our anchor is in Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to continue in Ezekiel tonight, Yisrael. I just want to comfort us, reassure us to continue, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Because Yahweh has some plan special for us for Shabbat. What is that? His mitzvah. His Torah. Hallelujah. But let us receive these breadcrumbs tonight to prepare us, to hold us, Yisrael, unto Shabbat. It says in Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 1, because this is the birth of us, the nation of Israel, and how us as a people has caused Almighty Yahweh in many ways and examples to, to multiply his promises. Let me begin. Verse 1, Ezekiel 16, verse 1. It says, again, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, this is Ezekiel, he's speaking, son of Adam, Cause Yerushalayim to Yada to know her abominations. Do we know our abominations? That is what the messenger has been sent for with a message to assure and to reassure us, Israel, of our place and where we are. If we had not a step out of that bound, we could have been a step farther today. It's to show us where we are, if I may use in this this uh, measuring stick of Yahshua HaMashiach, have we met that mark today? Because believe me, Yisrael, we don't walk according to Torah at all times. We will fall. We will come short. Hallelujah. But he said, call Jerusalem to know her abominations and say, thus saith Almighty Yahweh, the sovereign of Jerusalem, your birth and your nativity is in the land of Canaan. He said, your father was an Amorite, and your mother an Hittite. Two, as we will say at this time, two different nations, different people. But yet, Yahweh is explaining unto us, this is where we come from, Israel, the nation called Israel. Verse 4. And as for your nativity... And the day you were born, he says that your navel, it was not cut. We were not separated by those things of the world. Those things of, of, of the past, our past sins. We have not been separated, those things. The thoughts of those things still yet remain among Kol Yisrael because of what these two nations have done. So he said your navel cord was not even cut. Neither were you washed in water to even clean you up. That's important. Even at the birth of a child, the navel cord must be cut. It, it, can, it can't remain. It has to be removed. And then the child has to be washed in water. 
Yes, right, yeah. We must be washed in the living water of Almighty Yahweh and the Mishra, the Torah of Yahshua HaMashiach. And we must allow this navel cord to be cut off of the things of the world. Sure, you might be separated, but that navel has got to come off, Israel. Yeah. Because if it does not, it allows things back into the body that should not be unclean things. So Yahweh said that your navel cord was not cut, Israel. Yeah. Neither were you washed in water. He said, you are not salted at all. No swallowed at all. You are not wrapped. You was not prepared. Verse 5. He says that when you laid there, no eye pitied you. No one loved you. There was no Ahava in the world. There might have been a creed, but there was no true Ahava, no true love. He said, you are not pitied. To do any of these in you, to have compassion upon you, but you were cast out in an open field. We were cast out in the open without any ahava, without anyone to come to rescue us, to comfort us. Can you imagine taking a child, a newborn, and casting that babe into the field? That's very cruel, is it not? Well, the world is cruel. And we were cast into the world, Yisrael. It says, to the loathing of your person in the day that you were born. And when I, Yahweh, when I passed by you, we were full of ourselves, we were full of sin, dying, the neighbor core was not cut, we was dirty. Those that passed by us and saw us lying there, they had no pity, no harbor, no kind of compassion to even cleanse us or to give us a drink of water. But yet Yahweh saw us there. Yahweh had his compassion upon us. He said that Yahweh said that when I passed by you in verse 6, and I saw you, I noticed you, you were polluted in your own blood. You laid there in your own sin. It was not the Dharma, Yahshua, Hamashiach. It was your own blood. You're not going to be cleansed by your own blood, by your own way, by your own path, Yisrael. That's not acceptable before Almighty Yahweh. We must make a change tonight, Israel. We must stand on the Torah. We must have Imuna and those things that Yahweh have spoken. Because without that, without those things and those promises Yahweh has spoken, if we don't have Imuna and those things to stand on, on those things, then we yet remain in our sins. We remain in our own blood. There is no Dhamma Yahshua. We must believe, Israel. And if we believe as we say we do, they will stand on the promises of Almighty Yahweh. We will not give in to the world. We will not, we will not allow our self-preservations and what I want to do and what we want to do get in the way of what Yahweh has spoken. But we will allow Yahweh to have his perfect work. He said, you will lay it in your own blood. Not the Dharma Yahshua. He said, I saw you in your own blood. And listen to this. He said, I said. I said. While you was lying there, many of those people that passed by you didn't say anything to you. No compassion, but Yahweh, he said, I said to you, but you are yet in your own blood to live. Hallelujah. He said, live. He's speaking unto us tonight to live. How do we live? Was he saying to us as we lay there in our own blood to live? But he knew that there has to be a change. There has to be a process of cleansing that has to go forth. We couldn't continue to lay there in our own sin and our own blood in that state with that old navel cord, Yisrael. Yeah. But Yahweh, he looked unto us and said, I give you my Torah to live. That is our confidence, Yisrael. Yeah. His Torah that he said, that he speaks unto us and he says to live tonight. That's all that we have, Yisrael. Yeah. That's all the reassurance that we need, that he spoke unto us through Yahshua HaMashiach and he said, to, he said live. Yeah. Yahshua said, no man has taken my life. No one has taken my life. He said, I give it unto Yah. He said, I give it unto the lost sheep of Kol Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said, he looked upon us and he said, live. Yes. He said, I said to you when you was in your blood to live. Hallelujah. Verse 7. He said, I have caused you to multiply as the bud of the field. 
and you have increased because I said unto you that to live. He said, you have increased and you have waxed great. He said, you have become excellent in your ornaments. And the ornaments should be those things that Yahweh gives unto us to adorn us, to make us beautiful, to make us attractive unto him, Yisrael. Not to the world, but unto him. He says, he says, you have grown excellent in your ornaments. He said that your breasts, they are fashioned. He said, you're a haba. That's what that is, the shah, the breast. That's what a baby desires to lay. He said, I have shaped your ahava. I have shaped your breast, your love. And he said, and your hair is grown. He said, it's your honor, your beauty. That's what the hair represents. It has grown. Whereas you were naked, you was bald, you was naked and bare. Verse 8. He said, now when I passed by you, I looked upon you, and behold, your time was the time of beloved. His beloved, his ahava to be poured out upon us. His love to be poured out upon us. He said, you at this time, while you was in your own blood, perishing. He said, I poured out my ahava upon you. And he said, I spread my garment, my skirt over you. You was naked. Every part exposed, your shame was exposed. He said that I took my garment of Sadiq of righteousness, my skirt, he said, and I covered you. Hallelujah. Are we covered in the skirt? Are we covered in his garment, Israel? Yeah? It's not that his garment's white. Hallelujah. And it covers our nakedness, Israel. Yeah? And he said, I covered your nakedness. Yes, he said, I swore. He said, I promise unto you. When he spoke unto us, he promised unto us. When he said, I said or I speak, the confirmation, it is a promise unto us, Israel. He said, I swore to you, and I entered into a covenant with you, says Almighty Yahweh. And he said, at that point, you became mine. He said, you're mine. He said, the covenant, it is sealed. You are mine. I covered you. I took you out of that blood, your own sins, and I've washed you. I poured my ahava upon you, the Dhamma Yahshua HaMashiach. He said, you are mine. Verse 9. Then I washed you with water. Hallelujah. The living water. The pure water. Not the stuff of the world you drink. I don't care how, how they try to purify it or distill the water. It's not pure like this water. Hallelujah. Why? Because this water calls you to live. This water washes your sins. It cleanses you up. He said, there I washed you with water. Yes. He said, I thoroughly washed away your blood from you. He said, it took some work. It took some scrubbing. But I thoroughly. Yahweh, he is thorough, Yisrael. Kid you not, he is thorough. So why does he send messengers before us? Why do trials and tribulations still yet come? Because he is thorough and he is washing us. He's washing us out of our own blood. He's letting us know it's not by our way. It's not by the path we have made. He said, but it is by the dumb. And it's by my word. It's because I said to you to live. He said, I thoroughly washed your blood from you. And look what he says, which is so beautiful. He said, and I anointed you with oil. The oil of gladness. Hallelujah. The oil of, of contentment. That we are very satisfied with what Yahweh is doing. Our present state right now, we should be satisfied with what Yahweh has done. Why? Because it's through him that we are here. Where we are today. Whether you believe it or not. It's not by some kind of happenstance or some chance. Are we flipping a quarter and said heads or tail? Yahweh said, it's my desire for you to be here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Why? That we may continue to grow. That we will see our mighty Yahweh in his hands in all things, Israel. Yeah. Even in the smallest of things. And we will look, we will see his hand. That's what he wants us to do. He wants us to know that he has washed us. He has cleansed us, Yisrael. Yeah. He wants our eyes to be open that when we come before his presence, we can bring our offer. That's all he wants. It's to give him Toda. Say, thank you, Yahweh. Is that hard to say? 
The people, no matter what you do for them, they cannot say thank you. I, I appreciate that. A whole, I thank you for that. You, you didn't have to do it, but I'm glad you, you did that. Toda, thank you. Uh, man, what you do that for, but thank you. There's some people that can't even say thank you. It's hard for that simple word to come out of their mouth. But you know, that's what Yahweh wants us to do tonight, is to say thank you, Yahweh. You washed me for my sins, for my iniquity. Thank you, Yahweh. You pulled me out of my own ways, out of my own blood. Thank you, Yahweh. Told her, Yah. He said, even for your nativity, what, what is that? Your native ways, your, your, your habits, and what your mama taught you, what your daddy taught you. you. All those things have to be cast away. Why? Because he has placed us in a living way, in a straight path, Israel, Yah. And he has washed us. He has cleansed us. Hallelujah. Let us be encouraged, Yisrael. Let us stand on those promises, the oath that Yahweh has made, the covenant he has made with us, which cannot be broken. That should give us reassurance to trample the devil's head. Hallelujah. That should give us the strength to trample our own ways. To make sure that there's no more of our own blood, of our own will, that remains, Yisrael. Jeremiah, turn me to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 18. We must allow Yahshua HaMashiach to rule Yisrael in our lives. The Torah to have, have preeminence or be first in all that we do. And if we do that, we will receive the blessings of Almighty Yahweh. And this is an example of this, of Yisrael, as it was under the rule of, 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 um, Yahshua, our Messiah. It says here in Jeremiah 30, verse 18, this says Yahweh, to behold, I want you to look upon this thing. I want you to hold it into your left, into your mind. He said, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents and have husset upon his dwelling places. And the city shall be built upon her own heap. And the place shall remain after the manner thereof. What is he saying? Those things that have been thrown down, that has been destroyed. Yahweh said that I will build them again. I will restore those things. I will restore the Amuna, the strength, the Ahava, as they once were. Verse 19. Oh, he's tough at rebuilding and restoring Israel, yeah. And he says, and out of them shall perceive Todah, thanksgiving. And the voice of them shall make merry. And he said, I will multiply them. He said he will multiply us. He will cause us to grow. He will cause us to become strong as a nation and as a people. And he said, and they shall not be few. He said, I will also honor them, and they shall not be small. Verse 20. He says, Neither their children also shall be as before, and their congregation shall be established before me. And he said, And I will punish all them that oppress them. Yahweh said, I will fight. He said, I will punish those that oppress you. Those that trouble you, those that mock you in your way and you're walking your shoe, Hamashiach, Yahweh said, don't worry about it. He said, I, I'll take care of them. He said, I will oppress them. We have no need to worry, Yahweh. We have no need to fret as long as we stand on the covenant, the promises of Almighty Yahweh. And in that, that we continue on. That we press on. That we press on this way. That we press on up this hill, Yahweh, unto Zion. Hallelujah. I want to read a little bit here in 1st Kepha, 1st Peter. Chapter 1. Because even in here, Kepha, he knew concerning the blessings of Almighty Yahweh and all of his benefits. And he did not cease to give Yahweh Toda. He did not cease to thank Yahweh for all that he has done and what he is doing. Just as we should right now, Yisrael. It says in 1 Kepha, 1 Peter, verse 1. It says, Kepha an apostle of Yahshua HaMashiach, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, 
and Berthea. He said, those that are led to the foreknowledge of Almighty Yahweh, our Abba, through the set apartness of his Ruach. So his Ruach is set us apart. It sets us apart from all others, Yisraeli, as a nation, as a people. He sets us apart to the obedience of the sprinkling of the dom of Yahshua HaMashiach, to the free, unparted, or unmerited Ahava and favor unto you. And shalom be multiplied. He said, Blessed be Yahweh our Abba of our master Yahshua HaMashiach, which according to the abundance of his, hasid, his Ahava, has begotten us again to a lively tigva. And how did that tigva come? It goes on to say, by the resurrection of Yahshua HaMashiach from the dead. Do we believe in the resurrection? There are those that don't believe in the resurrection. How should we as a people be brought up again to meet him if we're not resurrected? We must be resurrected from what our own way we talked about laying in our own blood. That's what Yahweh did. He resurrected us. He brought us out of our own blood. And he washed us. That's what the resurrection is, Israel. Yeah. That we are made pure and set apart unto Almighty Yahweh. He said, in this tikva, this promise, this oath by resurrection of Yahshua HaMashiach from the dead, to the, uh, to the inherited, incorruptible, and unfeigned, which fades not away. So this incorruption, it should never fade away in Yahshua HaMashiach. He said it is reserved even to Hashemiah for who? For the world? Who is turned to that verse? What does it say? For who? For you. This resurrection which cannot be broken, it doesn't grow old, this promise, it, it doesn't grow weary, it is for you. This resurrection, this transformation, this change. It is for you, Yisrael. Yeah. Who are kept by the power of Yahweh through Imuna unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. I believe we're in the last time. Since the, the death of Yahshua HaMashiach, that marked the last or the latter time, the young Akarith Yisrael. Yeah. We're in the last time. So this is a promise. It is, it is an oath unto us, Yisrael, yeah, this resurrection. Wherein you greatly rejoice. Do we rejoice in the resurrection? This promise? He said, you will greatly rejoice. Though now for a season, if need be. He said, you and your heaviness through the manifold temptations. Verse 7. That even the trial of your imuna being much more precious than that of gold, which perishes. Though it were tried by fire, might be found. What? To the praise and to the honor. So those things we go through the trials. It is to us for the praise and for the honor and the splendor at that appearance of Yahshua HaMashiach. So should we try to skirt around those things? We should go in. Head first. Running. Why? Because we are assured and reassured in his promises and his abundance. Yes, right, yeah. And those things he had by oath Give it unto us, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, it's something. You have those that win the lottery. And then sometimes there are those that have the winning ticket and don't even know it. But yet, even, it may be just a few minutes for them to get to a telephone or someone to proclaim their prize. They will do absolutely anything they can to get to it. Ten million. Fifteen million. Whatever the jackpot might be. But we have our riches in Yahshua HaMashiach. Let us do what it takes, Israel. Yeah. Let us lay aside the sin of those things that even easily beset us out of the way of Almighty Yahweh. Let us cast down those imagination and those things, Israel. It's just hindrances. Hallelujah. That we might hit the jackpot, if I may use that term. The promises of Almighty Yahweh. He's already given it to us, Israel. He just wants us to claim it. He just wants us to believe it, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. You better make your call of Yahshua HaMashiach sure. And your Imuna. Hallelujah. That it is sure, Yisrael. 
He said, your emuna, your faith being much more precious than that of gold that perishes. Though tried with fire, might be found to the praise and the honor of and the splendor at the appearance of Yahshua HaMashiach. Verse 8. Whom having not seen, we have not seen him physically, but yet we see him and our, 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 our whole king and the things that he does for us daily, Israel. Yah. He said, you ahava him, you love, and in whom though you see him not, yet we believe by Imuna. I believe. Do we believe, Israel? Yah? I believe. He said, and I believe you rejoice with joy, unspeakable. And full of honor and the praises unto Almighty Yahweh. Verse 9. He said, receiving the end of your imuna, the end of your faith. We must receive that. He has given it unto us. This resurrection, this promise, the end. It doesn't say the end of your imuna. It's not the end. It's that promise of resurrection. He said, I want you to grasp hold unto that. Because it is yours to have. I have given it to you. Just believe in it, Yisraeli, and continue. He said, receiving the end of your imuna, even the Yasha of salvation in Yahshua HaMashiach for your nephesh, for your being, for your inner man. So let us believe, Yisraeli. Let us walk assured with reassurance of the promises of Almighty Yahweh. Not that we hope, but we have tikvah. That is knowing that it is there. And as he says right here, we just... Go and possess that and grab and hold on to that, Yisrael, yeah, because it is ours. It is yours. It is yours. Go get it. Claim it. And Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. A little bit in, in Psalms here, Yisrael. Yeah. Concerning this abundance, the riches of Yahshua HaMashiach. Because it cannot be compared to anything. The gold of Oprah. The monies that are in the bank which is all just a false facade or any kind of riches of fame. He says here, first of all, to Helium 37, and I want to move to, to Helium 104 and then 112. But it says here in 37.16 to Helium, he says that a little, that is meal, that is, it's very small, it's a little. If we want to compare that to bread, just a little leavening, leaven the whole lump. It don't take much to make it rise. So he says that a little that a Sadiq, a righteous man has, he says it is better. It is better. It is more. It is worth more. It says it is better than the riches of many wicked. So even that the little that we do have in Yahshua HaMashiach is worth more than the riches of many wicked. Hallelujah. To Helium 104.24 concerning the riches and even the birth of these things in Yisrael through Yahweh in Yahshua HaMashiach. To Helium 104.24 says, O Yahweh, how manifold are your works? They're manifest. They are revealed unto Ko Yisrael. And hook my wisdom. Have you made them all? He said, the earth is full of your riches. The earth is full of the riches of Almighty Yahweh. Everything we see, it belongs unto him. He's created all things that all belong to him. The Torah says even the cattle upon a thousand hills. No matter where they are, those cattle, they belong to him. Hallelujah. And if we remain in Yahshua HaMashiach, then those same things belong unto Ko Yisrael, our inheritance. All things. To Helium 112, verse 1, I want to begin reading. Because of the riches of Yahweh, Yahweh, it fills the house of Yisrael. It should fill our lair. It should fill our, our heart. Our mind should be consumed with those things, Yisrael. It says in Tehillim 112, verse 1, Hallelujah, Yahweh. Blessed is the man that fears Yahweh, that delights greatly now in his commandments. We must delight greatly in his commandments. It says that his zero, his seed, just like Abram, he promised Abram that his seed shall multiply. 
It says that his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be barat, it shall be blessed. So we pray for our children that the generation of the upright, as they continue in this walk, in this way, they will be blessed. Verse 3, he says, wealth and riches shall be in his house. We have wealth and the riches of Almighty Yahweh is in our house, Yisrael, in the bed called Yisrael. And his righteousness, it what? It endures forever. It continues. It doesn't wear out. It doesn't give up. It endures. His Ahava endures. Forever. Quickly, Proverbs, Mishli chapter 22, verse 4. Again, concerning the abundance of the riches of Almighty Yahweh, his promises that we continue, that we stand strong, that we believe, we have Imuna, and that we press this right no matter what comes our way, that we just believe, and we walk like we believe. Hallelujah. It says in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 4, he says, by humility and the fear of Yahweh are riches and honor and life. That's where it comes by, humbling ourselves before him, having humility, that we lay down our gifts and all that we have, and we believe we are before the throne of Yahshua HaMashiach. That's where the riches come from. That's where life comes from, Yisrael. To Helium 52. If you want to just write these down quickly, I'm going to somewhat move with expedience. To Helium 52, verse 7. That we here expresses, Lo, this is the valiant warrior that made not Yahweh his strength, but he trusted in the abundance of his riches, his own riches, his own abundance. And the strength of himself, it is wickedness. He trusted in his own blood. He laid down his own blood and believed his own strength and his own riches, Israel. We must not do that, Israel, because Yahweh has pulled us out of our blood and has washed us with living water. So we must trust and believe in him above all things. Again, to Helium 104, 24. O Yahweh, how manifold are your works in wisdom. You have made them all. The earth and the earth is full of your riches. Sharat, chapter 40, verse 26. This is just a few scriptures that I somewhat properly written down, Israel. Sharat 40, verse 26. Riches and strength, they lift up the heart. They lift up the left. But the fear of Yahweh is better than them both. Sharat was wise, was he not, Yisrael? Yeah. Because the man think he has something when he has a little money in his pocket. He has a nice new car. He think he's something. Yeah. He gets out of it, and in his pride, he tries not to grin. Because yeah. he know people are turning and looking at it. Yeah. But the Torah says that the wisdom of Yahweh is greater than all that, and greater than them both. Yeah. It says there is no want in the fear of Almighty Yahweh. If we fear him, we trust and believe in all that he has said and has spoken unto us. Torah says there is no want. Yahweh, he is our tough shepherd, is he not? Yahshua, he's our tough shepherd. We shall not want. Because he leads us, what, beside the still waters. That's what he does for us, Yisrael. And he leads us into green pastures. And with it, there is no need to seek for help. So let us abide in the fear and the ahava of Almighty Yahweh, Yisrael. And in my closing, I'm going to somewhat close briefly tonight. Hallelujah. I want to talk about the abundance of the blessings of Almighty Yahweh that shall come to the nation of Kol Yisrael. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 4. Verse 4, verse 2, verse 9. And we may be going to Proverbs just for a few scriptures that I'm going to bring this to a close. Hallelujah. It should encourage us tonight, Israel, of all things, to just remain and to continue to stand. The promise of Yahweh, he has promised those things to us. He just says, I've given it to you already. Just hold on to that and continue. Isaiah 61, verse 4. And they shall build the old ruins 
They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the wasted cities and the desolation of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And the sons of the aliens, or those that are estranged, shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. They should take care of the vine in the orchards. But you shall be named the Kohen of Almighty Yahweh. We should be named the Kohen, the messenger of Almighty Yahweh. It says that men shall call you the minister of the speaker or the carrier of, our, of Yahweh, our Almighty. It says you shall eat the riches of the nation, and in their splendor you shall boast yourself. So we shall boast in Yahshua HaMashiach. We shall boast in Almighty Yahweh the things he have done. Verse 7. He says, for your shame, you shall have double. And for your confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, shall they possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. He says, I, Yahweh, he said, I love judgment. And I hate robbery for a burnt offering. He said, I hate those things that have been taken Upon your own lust, and you try to offer those things unto me. He said, I hate those things. He said, I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. And that zero shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the zero, the seed, the chosen, which Yahweh, he has blessed. So we are the zero, we are the chosen, Israel, Yah that Yahweh has blessed. Hallelujah. Told you, hallelujah. Bless you, Abba. Let me just read this in Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 15 through 23, and I'm going to stop there for tonight. Hallelujah. The great riches in Almighty Yahweh and his hookmah and all wisdom. It says in Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 15, Therefore I also, after I heard of your Imuna and Yahshua HaMashiach. Do we have Imuna and Yahshua HaMashiach? Yeah. 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 He said that the fame, that the, the, the speaking of that, he said, I heard it of your Imuna. And the love to all Yisrael. He said in verse 16, cease not to give Toda for you, make a mention of you in my prayers. Do we give Toda? Unto Yahweh for each other? Do we mention one another? Unto Yahweh in our prayers, Israel, Yah? You know, it's something because we, even when we bring the children together for prayer at night before they go to bed, we, le we, le we let each one of them say their little thing. Even though it may seem silly, yet their little lambs are so sincere. You have Dawid calling out the name of Yesha and all the, the young little Akim and the Ahokim and the Zakain. Even the little ones know to mention the names, hallelujah. Yeah. So we should mention the names unto Almighty Yahweh in our palat and our prayer. Verse 17. That Abba Yahweh of our master Yahshua HaMashiach, our Abba of splendor, may give to you the Ruach of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Verse 18. He said, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the tigva of his calling. And what the riches of the honor and splendor of his inheritance in Yahshua HaMashiach to all Yisrael. Verse 19. And what is the excellent, exceeding greatness of his power unto us who believe. So there's exceeding power unto us that believe Yisrael according to the working of his mighty power. Hallelujah. Which he has worked in Yahshua HaMashiach when he raised him from the dead and set him as his own right hand in the Shemayim. For above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. I don't know about you, that's powerful. Not only in this world, but that which is to come. 
and has put all things under Yahshua HaMashiach's feet, and gave Yahshua to be the head over all things unto the congregation of Israel, which is Yahshua's body, the complete extension of Yahweh that fills all and all. So let us allow Yahshua HaMashiach, the Mishra, the Taurus, to fill us, Israel. Yah. Fill our minds, fill our hearts, the promises he has spoken unto us, his many blessings, that we grasp hold of those things and just hold on to what he has promised us. He's already given us those things in Yahshua HaMashiach. All we have to do is to continue, to hold on. I remember the old song, it said, hold on, help is on the way. Hallelujah. So let us hold on, Yisrael, Yah, because Yahshua, we're in his way. He's already here. Hallelujah. He's amongst Yisrael, Yah. So let us continue in his way. Let us hold on. Hallelujah. I know this message has been an inspiration to call Yisrael, Yah, that we stand on the promises of Almighty Yahweh, that we walk according to the Mishra and the Torah. Just a nugget, just a morsel of bread for us tonight, Yisrael, Yah, that we continue to walk in those things he has established. He has already established his word, Yisrael, Yah. It should never fall. He's already established his promise, and he has already given those things unto us, Israel, that we should have. So let us press, let us continue, let us endure, and let us continue to give Yahweh toda for all things. Hallelujah. You see how our king, they're pulling in, told Yahweh for their safety, even amongst the highways. That's a dangerous place, whether you realize it or not, that road. Been out there, people vi on, in their vehicles, they're texting, they're on their phones, they're, they're reading, they're doing everything on the highway except just paying attention. So we told the Yahweh for protecting us, for protecting you, our, our king, as they travel, as you go from place to place. Let us stand to our feet, Israel. Let us remember those in prayer. Even those we do not know their names, we know Kol Yisrael that are scattered, that Yahweh will strengthen, that he will keep. And that he will continue to provide those things which are needed in these last and evil days. Let us shoot, let us turn. Abba Yahweh, we do barak you for this another time, an occasion that we, you have rocked us to come into the Bay of Kol Yisrael Yah, here at Teshu community. Those that are listening by via of live stream, they're also with us in one mind and, and, and one, one heart, Abba Yahweh, one consent, Abba Yahweh, that we shall walk according to to your Mishra and your Torah, Abba Yahweh. We do barak you, we give you praise, we do ask that as we have said, those that have traveled far and near, Abba Yahweh, that you protect them, that your Mishra will be as a hedge around them, just as it was, Eo, Abba Yahweh, that the enemy cannot enter into the most Kodesh place, into the bed, Abba Yahweh, the heart, the love. And all things we do give you Torah, and the precious, in my name of Yahshua, HaMashiach, give all Yisrael Yahweh rest today, those that have labored, Abba Yahweh, that we can prepare for tomorrow, Abba Yahweh. And all things we give you, told out Yahshua's name. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yahweh Barak, Yisrael.